Sexual energy is the energy of life. It's the life force itself. So when we are not fully at ease in our sexuality, it means we are not fully at ease in life. Because the way you show up in your sexuality, the way you show up in your bedroom, is exactly the way you show up in the rest of your life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy to be here with you today, beautiful humans. Whether you're joining me live or catching up with the replay, I'd love to hear from you. And I uh, would love to know how this topic resonates in you. So as you may see, the title is or Orgasmic Life orgasms that change you and this conversation is so important and is so often overlooked because it seems like it's about pleasure and pleasure is perhaps a luxury it's not something that is a must in our lives however sexual energy is the energy of life it's the life force itself. So when we are not fully at ease in our sexuality, it means we are not fully at ease in life. Because the way you show up in your sexuality, the way you show up in your bedroom, is exactly the way you show up in the rest of your life. And it is really that energy that has created us. It's the energy that created the creation itself. So how can it not impact how we feel about ourselves, how we feel in our relationships, how, we, how our finances flow, how life flows? how connected we are, how open we are, how alive we are, really. Because we are the, the, we are the seed of creation. Within us, there is a potential for absolutely everything. Divinity is our true nature, which means totality is our true nature. So how can we not be available to those things that we really want to have in our lives. And I believe that through connection to sexuality, through expansion of our orgasmicness, this is where we really unlock things on such a deep level, on the fundamental level. So as you are here with me, and I'm happy to see many of you here live with me, please let yourself feel what I'm talking about are really significant topics. These things don't leave anyone indifferent. And through our softening into these conversations, into these topics, we soften into all of life. We can change ourselves on a fundamental level by going directly into sexuality, by working directly with sexuality. We open the Pandora's box. We open something that is usually kept hidden and something that we don't usually explore so much and something that we don't even talk so much about and something seems like it's just like a kind of secret part of our lives. And there's so much misunderstanding. There's so much confusion. It, like, it literally, it, it hurts me to see how much confusion there is. And I've gone so deep into sexuality. Although in the first place, I didn't think I needed any exploration because I, I felt pretty open naturally. But after uh, over 13 years now of very deep exploration of sexuality, I have to say that there is always more to open to. And even in my own life, even after all these years and even after uh, <laughs> writing a book <laughs> directly about sexuality, after working with thousands and thousands of people from all over the world and seeing them liberate themselves into completely new levels of life and orgasmicness and freedom, I still have to say that there is still so much more, so much more. That's why I am deeply passionate about this work, deeply passionate about this particular subject and that's why I have a whole online course, a program, uh, actually a masterpiece of a program coming up, The Deep Feminine, which is all about inviting women into those deep, deep, dark, often places 
uh, in our body uh, we directly work on sexuality and on our expansion as women and our orgasmicness as women inside of that program so anyway here we are and i really want to shed a light on some important things which really are shocking to me uh, when i hear and um, it's amazing that there's so little questioning also because when you see kind of normal sexuality work in the world uh, this is about kind of becoming a better lover sounds like a good thing mm, kind of pleasing your partner better maybe also um, like it implies that you will be a better lover so you will keep your partner and you will attract a partner and you will keep your partner and if there is some kind of a difficult situation in a relationship where the sex is not so vibrant anymore or there maybe even have been an experience of another person appearing in your life and maybe even a cheating situation or some kind of pain that usually awakens us and this is when usually people start to look into the into their sexuality and going like okay well yes i've been if I'm honest, I've been really focused on being a mother and I've been a mother and a mother and a mother and I completely forgot myself as a lover. In this situation most women, most uh, mothers have experienced where you just really focus on one archetype, on one aspect of your womanhood and you completely forget the other ones and usually the first one we forget is the lover, is the sacred slut, is that one who is so at ease with her sexuality. Yeah, so this normally wakes us up, okay, something happened, another woman appeared in the field, something got, went off and like, okay, how do I come back to it? And then you find all sorts of courses that teach you how to be a geisha or that teach you how to, how to do a, a blowjob, a world-class blowjob or something like that. And very often those kind of uh, programs, maybe they have a good intention, but oftentimes they feed something which is not empowering you in a, in a bigger sense. Very often these kind of approaches are about how to give your man so much pleasure so he ejaculates as fast as possible. And this is definitely not the kind of approach I encourage uh, because there's nothing magnificent in a man losing his vital force, which is what happens when he ejaculates unconsciously. Yeah, and there's a lot, like I have a lot <laughs> to say on that and I just really want to focus on, on the most important things here. Another, uh, so a very big uh, thing that I see, uh, like when people like dare to speak about sexuality, they speak about, okay, women uh, learning how to orgasm and then just recently I read something where someone who positions herself as an expert in the field of sexuality, she says that women can only orgasm through clitoris. And I was like, this is wrong. <laughs> this is just wrong. And all this only says that we look at sexuality from here, from the head. And when we look at sexuality from here, it means we just talk about it, it means we just think about it, it means we just get those ideas of how to be the sexiest, the hottest, and the, you know, how to bring the sexy thing. It's just mind stuff. And actually to really understand our nature as humans and our potential and this body and, and how intrinsically we are interwoven with the whole fabric of existence, we have to come into the body, body, body. <laughs> and when we are in the head, we are actually escaping the body. We are kind of away from it. And the reason for it is shame, shame. This is such a, such a disease uh, on our planet, the shame. We don't understand how deeply this shame is ingrained in the fabric of being a human. And the shame has to go. The way shame goes though is not by shaming shame and by seeing that shame is something wrong, but by loving, but by loving ourselves, loving our humanity, really coming to peace with humanity and recognizing how loved we are 
And that's even the reason why we are here is because we are loved. And we come here to experience an embodied understanding of that because it is so pleasurable, because it feels so good, because it feels so good to open up this devotional body of yours, this devotional heart of yours and experience God directly in your body and experience your limitlessness directly in your body, not as a concept over here. So sexuality serves that. Our remembrance of our totality, of our infinity, this is what the the book is about. People think, oh, it's about orgasms. Well, how to have some pleasure. It's called true pleasure, beyond pleasure. Beyond pleasure. What does it mean beyond pleasure? Beyond pleasure means into God, into the totality of who we are, into the infinite potential of yours, into the recognition that everything you've ever desired is your birthright, that everything that is really this pure desire that is just moving through you, where you want to feel free, when you want to feel liberated, when you want to feel generous, when you want to be giving, when you want to have overflow of money, where you want to have overflow of beautiful nurturing relationships in your life, when you want to have overflow of deep connection with life, with people around you. This is all your birthright. This is all what you're meant to experience here. But if you are repressing this beautiful energy of life that is your inherent human nature, if you are putting so much effort and repressing it, this is why you are so tired. This is why you're so exhausted because you're trying to repress what is so intrinsically yours. And then we get so much, you get tired and then you go more and more into the head and more and more trying to resolve your problems by understanding, by figuring it out where all the answers are here. But do you dare to listen? Do you dare to soften? And normally you do not because it is so scary. And that's why it's important to be held as we do that. You cannot underestimate the value of support in your life. Now I was like almost in tears of gratitude because right now I have a beautiful woman cleaning my home and I am so grateful. I am like, oh my gosh, can we just take a moment right now to really feel the gratitude for people who are genuinely wanting to support us? Like, how much is it worth? It's so precious that someone actually comes and cares enough to take care of my stuff and liberate so much time for me so that I can be here with you and give you the value. This is so precious. I am so grateful. (sighs) And also in the same way, we get to support those parts of ourselves which actually need support. And your sexuality needs support. Your full humanity, your full expression needs support. We need that, like nutrients, like food. (sighs) So... I asked uh, you uh, recently what my my, uh, my people on um, Instagram, I asked a question, I asked what are the challenges that you're experiencing I- around sexuality? And there were so many responses, like hundreds, so many responses. And um, a lot of it was around like, okay, I don't experience orgasms or I experience orgasms only from stimulation, which is only one type of orgasm. It's this external uh, orgasm, the clitoral orgasm. This is just one, just one, just one type of orgasm. And it actually doesn't even give you an understanding of what is an orgasm. Yeah, take that. Audio is bad, someone's telling me. Is it true? Is it for everyone? Or maybe you just need to use headphones? Um, so clitoral orgasm for women just the tip of the iceberg it's not even a full on orgasm actually it's just a sensation it's just a, an explosion of sensation uh, that comes from like you stimulate you, you like you rub against something and you pressure and you pressure and you pressure 
which actually has a lot to do with suppression, the pressure that you put on this poor clitoris. <laughs> and again, not to shame anyone, I did the same thing when I was a child. Ah, you pressure, you pressure, you pressure, and then bah, okay, the body goes like, okay, okay, I have enough, okay, just let me just explode. And then the explosion happens. Just the tip of the iceberg. You can have that sometimes. Sometimes you can have that. But don't get attached to it because when you get attached to it, you pressure and you repressure. Repress, repress. You repressure it. Your sexuality, your beauty, your radiance, your magnificence, your flow of your waters and all the flow, because once this flow really opens up, life starts flowing in all senses. So this is one thing. People say, I don't feel those other orgasms. Like I need to really do the pressure thing, then I feel the orgasm, ha, a few seconds of joy, and then what? You feel depleted. You feel low, actually. You feel like you don't want to be touched anymore. You're complete. You've finished. Yeah. This sense of finished, it means you've lost energy. We don't want to lose energy. We want to have energy. We want the energy to flow through us. We want to give opening to life. We want to give opening to all the goodness and beauty and abundance of life. Why do we want to stop it? There is something behind it. And those of you who are more sensitive, you may have a sense that there is something behind it that kind of wants it to end and that is not so interested for us to keep blossoming, to keep expanding, to keep unleashing the magnificence of being, the divine being that we are. So, alternative, come out of the shame and of numbness because numbness and shame they are like the couple they are together they're always together the, the numbness and shame why are you numb because something in you is really uncomfortable with the power that will get unleashed once you see what's underneath the numbness and when you see what's underneath the numbness and there are techniques yeah, there are techniques specific techniques that can be used very methodologically and this is something I'm teaching in the Deep Feminine of unlocking that numbness and I've had women in the previous round of the Deep Feminine tell me that they thought it's not gonna ever happen they, she's had the pain, there's one particular woman I'm thinking about right now she's had the pain always when she made love or she felt nothing or there was burning every single time her adult life as she's been sexually active there have been those things she said, like, we had the first session of the Deep Feminine, the first like, internal uh, session where we did the internal work. She was like, Sophia, I think I'm finished. It's not for me. It's not, never going to work for me. It's so much pain. I hate myself. I cannot go there. I'm like, darling, breathe. Next session, second session, she sent me a message. She was like, I cannot believe it. I had so much pleasure. I thought I, I, I was going to explode so much pleasure, no pain at all, no numbness, no burning at all. Second session. And when I share about my own experience of opening the yoni, uh, also first session was hell, second session was better, third session was full of pleasure. And some people told me, you're lucky. But it's not only me, it's also my clients. So there must be also difference in approach. And there also must be a difference in how deep we dare to go. Because we can stay very much on the surface with sexuality for a really long time. So anyway, when we unlock that numbness, we start to see that shame. When we start to see the shame, we see where the waters are not moving in our life. And the waters are like, in, we can see waters in, on so many levels. One level is your body. If you experience any kind of puffiness in your body, kind of cheeks that occupy way too much space on your face and kind of puffy eyes, 
puffy shoulders, like even something that may feel a bit like, like a child, this kind of puffy child. If you have those kind of things, the belly, the, the thighs, this is stored water, water that is not moving. On another level, so this is a very physical, practical level. On another level, the finances, how is money in your life? Do you let it flow? When it comes to you, you receive with gratitude. When you give it, you give with gratitude. And it feels like a circulation and a constant flow that you are just bathing in. This is how it's meant to feel. If it's not that, if you feel a contraction, money coming in, a contraction, oh my gosh, what if it's the last money coming in? Money going out, a contraction, oh my God, what if it's the last money going out? What if it's too much? What if I'm being ripped off? What if, what if, what if? Yeah, it's blocked water blocked flow it's not meant to be like that it can be different in relationships yeah if you're like oh something is like okay a relationship either you're already together and it's like oh there is a flow there is a connection and then boom it feels like you are closed the partner is closed there's no interaction you're trying to resolve it with your mind to go like oh my gosh it's his traumas coming up oh my gosh it's just i did something wrong oh my gosh maybe he's comparing me to his previous girlfriend and she was so much better in bed and and i am doing something wrong and i am just you know not adequate somehow this is trying to resolve it in your head where simply there is no flow there's no flow of natural exchange so just more and more levels we can go all the way to the level of your connection with god with the universe with really letting universal flow through you with you being inspired to live your life with your fullest expression also there are you allowing yourself to be seen is there flow in you expressing your heart constantly and reaching your heart and letting that enriched heart take up more and more space and then receiving more nourishment and then giving uh, more and then receiving even more nourishment flow is there such flow in your life so all of that is very directly in my experience of 13 years of working with that is very directly linked to the sexual flow so numbness is the first level numbness is like nothing is happening i don't feel i can only even worse what i just said all women can only orgasm from clitoris it's numbness it's just numbness you just don't feel it that's it that's the only reason why someone will ever say that it's just they didn't have the experience they're numb and then they generalize unfortunately and um, misinform others so to deal with numbness we have to deal with shame and also just work directly on that direct level don't try to figure it out with your mind again like work directly go directly there you stay with the numbness you breathe with the numbness you you de-armor the numbness and then what you start to see when you go to the next level is that there are so many tears you couldn't even imagine and there's also so much burning you're like Am I burning on the inside? Is there like fire on the inside of me? Or what's actually going on? Okay, that's what I've been repressing. That's why there has been all this numbness. Mm. That's why I've been trying to just rub it away. Stimulating myself to come to this. Ah, three seconds. Ah, ah, ah. This is not an orgasm. This is a sneeze. So... When you stop this and you go like, okay, I, I'll be here. I feel quite vulnerable, <laughs> but I'll be here. Hopefully I have the right support for that and I'll be here. And I trust the space that I'm held. Pain. <sighs> Underneath numbness, there's pain. Oh, that's what we didn't want to feel. We didn't want to feel the pain because it hurts to feel the pain. We don't like the pain. Oh. Okay, and you stay with the pain. And I'm there next to you, I'm like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, breathe, it's okay. It's okay to feel the pain. You don't need to suffer when you feel the pain. It's just pain. It's just one of the colors of this human experience, pain. Yes, you have pain in your yoni. Yes, when you make love and you feel pain and you're like, oh no, don't go there, it's horrible, maybe something is going wrong, maybe something will fall out. No, it's too much, too much pain. It's 
not right. Actually, uh, yes, you have to feel it. It's there. It's okay to feel it. It's okay to be with it. You are strong enough. I'm there with you, holding your hand, looking in your eyes. I got you. You're good. We can be with the pain. But pain there! I put everything I could not to feel it. All my shame around it, just not to go there. It's okay. It's okay. I can go there. It's okay. It doesn't make you bad or unevolved or unspiritual or blocked. We don't use this language. It's just pain. Let's just be with the pain. You're okay. You can cry. Please cry. Your tears are holy. These tears are watering the earth so that the flowers start blossoming. Please cry. Feel it. It's okay. And then... What starts to happen is incredible. Because underneath that is exactly what we were hoping to find in the first place, but we, we thought it was going to be just on the surface, but no, on the surface is just, <laughs> the sneeze is on the surface. When you go deep, pleasure, pleasure is there, not here, it's there. It's once you really accept all these layers of all this messy humanity, that's when you find pleasure. And pleasure is really the fabric of creation because it's this eroticism. It's the sense of being in the heart of God at all times. This is what pleasure is. The sense that you're always loved, always held in the embrace of the eternal beloved. This is what is pleasure. And it's not talk. Because I'm talking like this, I'm kind of using the poetry to invite you to feel it. Because you can feel it right now. And I'd love that for you. <laughs> because all it takes is for you to just unclench. To just go like, okay, okay, yeah, I can, I can stop all these thoughts right now. All this worry, what's coming next? How long is you going to be talking for? Is there something more interesting? <laughs> What is for dinner? Uh, where is my partner? Uh, how to make money? <laughs> when you stop all of that and you just go like, oh, okay, 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 just an experiment. <laughs> this crazy woman is inviting me into the experiment. Okay, I'll say yes to it. Okay, I am in the embrace of beloved right now. This is it. <laughs> this is it. And you get to stay there and it gets to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And this is how you understand what I mean by eroticism because sometimes people are like, not every woman is erotic. I'm like, of course every woman is erotic. It's the nature of life to be erotic. <laughs> Who are you? Not life? What are you then? <laughs> you are life. You are that love. You are that eroticism. So you better love yourself in that. Feel yourself in that. Oh, we were talking about sex. Wait a second. It was meant to be all hot and steamy. <laughs> How did we come here? Like that. Because God takes you to sex. God created you through sex, and the sex takes you to God, so it's like this. <laughs> That's the fun part of it all, that actually it takes you home. It's not this pressure and sneezing, <laughs> it's really taking you home. So these are the layers, numbness, pain. Pleasure. And then, yeah, we go deeper. We go deeper and we go deeper. And we discover that also in the very depth of the yoni, there is a queen. <laughs> the cervix. There is the cervix. 
And when you awaken the cervix, you change forever. Because the cervix, and most people don't even know what is a cervix. They only know that cervix dilates when you give birth. But not many know that cervix is actually a portal. Direct portal in your body. And you activate her in the right way. And she starts to feel. And you actually start to feel your cervix. Even now, you sitting here, or laying, or whatever you're doing. You can now feel your cervix, if you're a woman. Feel right now. No, oh, you can feel. Oh, where is it? Is it it's there. Yes. In the depth of your yoni. And you can even isolate the muscles of the cervix and contract them and relax them and contract them and relax them. And there's a lot of magic to it because then you get to also control your menstrual blood and bleed in the most natural way, which is free bleeding when you don't even need to use any tampons or pads or anything like that because you actually feel when you are releasing blood and it's a very beautiful, very intimate way to connect with your body. But even more importantly, I mean, on a different level, importantly, that it's your portal. It's your portal to so much flow that you have no idea until you really experience it. Until you really experience cervical orgasms, you don't even know what it means to be a woman. I'll say it like that. You don't even know what it means to be a woman until you fully unlock this insane power stored in your cervix. Insane. You forget this whole human identity when your cervix is active. When you enter into the, through the portal of cervical orgasms, you forget you trying to be decent, you trying to be shy, or having this kind of personality or that kind of personality, or having been abused even. You forget that. You stop identifying yourself with your victim stories. And abuse is a real thing. And abuse, of course, will create more layers of that numbness, more layers of shame, more layers of guilt. So this is so essential. If you've had any form of assault or abuse in your life or your body was, was touched in a way when you were not ready for it, this is so essential that you do this work. I mean, everyone, really. But know that nothing makes you immune to this work. Nothing makes you broken ever. You are never broken. Everything is possible to meet, to address, and to meet in love, and to heal with love. And it actually doesn't even have to take so much time. Because if you go through your head, it will take a lot of time. But if you go through your body, your body is so willing, your body is so ready, your body is calling you right now. That's the very reason you're listening to me right now. It's because your body is calling you. It's saying, yes, I am ready. I want to blossom from inside. Stop feeding me all this mental nonsense. The mind is beautiful. We love the mind. It's gorgeous. It's intelligent. Thank you, mind. But this is not it. This is not it. We can open from here. Blossom from here. Rest in bliss from here. Rest in all that abundance. And you will see that you you blossoming. Like the whole life wants to support that. <laughs> and the whole life is like, oh yes, please, please. Yes, here is all the support. Here is all the structure, all the holding, all the everything. Please, because you soften, you open, you rest in that bliss. You let the whole life flow. You bring us back home, all of us. It's not only about you, actually. <laughs> it's never only about you. You doing this work is your service to humanity. Not only because when you walk down the streets, people turning heads and going like, oh my gosh, what was that? <laughs> And they will want to be close to you and listen to you and then feel you and breathe the same air as you breathing. <laughs> but also because you are um, 
also because you are changing the fabric of creation. It's, it's really serious, actually. It's really important for women to do that because we are changing the world like this and the world needs to change. Please invite your friends. I see many of you are saying I need to share this with all the women in my life. Please invite friends. You can actually invite people here now, share it with them. Um, another manifestation of this disconnect is a lack of desire. Uh, <laughs> please tell us your contact info and your book name. <laughs> so my contact info is right here. You will see my... Uh, you are watching this uh, on my page. Yeah. So Instagram is where I'm hanging out. Uh, it's a beautiful place to, to meet me. But if you want to work with me, I really invite you into the deep feminine. The Deep Feminine is starting tomorrow, tomorrow. And this program, you see, there's so much for us to dive into. So I'm taking a whole month for that. And I'm taking now almost 100 women who signed up and those who are still coming. I'm taking you all on a journey of a lifetime, on a journey which will change you completely from inside, in that right feminine way. Not from here, but from here. And the blossoming will happen in all areas of your life, in all areas of your life, in all your relationships, in your experience of abundance, in the literal flow in your life. It's, it's happening. It's happening. We're doing it together. I love you too. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Uh, of course, I'll save this life. Um, so that's... That's the program that's starting tomorrow. I also wanted to say one thing about... I also see there are some questions coming in. I want to address those questions as well. Um, the thing about desire, also an important piece here. Yeah, lack of desire, yes. Um, lack of desire is also very deeply connected to shame. And it's also very deeply connected to the invitation that actually is taking place. The invitation to go in, to go deep. This is when we feel this lack of desire. Lack of desire, it's not a sign that, oh, I need to change a partner. Well, what do you mean you change a partner? You're like, of, care, of course you'll have a new partner and you, there'll be all the hormones and the oxytocin and the dopamine and all of that like cocktail happening in your brain. Of course you will have this, oh my gosh, I feel so horny, I feel so aroused. But it's not a measure of your openness. Your openness is actually happening in true intimacy, in true depth. And when you feel the lack of desire, lean in. Lean into it and see what is actually there. You will see so much shame there. You will see you're going deeper. And you will see that life is inviting you to unlock her through you. I have some notifications here. So, and through lack of desire, you remember life. If you're there, you go in and you grieve and you feel that shame and you feel that guilt and you soften more and more and more and you lean in more and more and more and then you start to see that it's not that you have desire, but you are desire. You are desire. You are erotic. And when you are home, when you're at home, in yourself, in your body, you are in the erotic merging with the divine. You are in the erotic merging with life. So sexuality, that like, yeah, your own self-pleasure practices, which are essential for everyone, your meetings, your intimate erotic meetings with your partner, they are just an extension of you. They are, they don't even stop. Like I feel my partner now in the room over there. I feel we are in the lovemaking right now. 
I don't even need to stop the live. <laughs> it's happening right now because I am open, because I feel him, because I know he, his, his smell right now. I know his essence right now because I am not blocked from it. I'm not blocking that field around me. I am in that openness right now. And, and this is how then, and then sexually also, then the yoni just naturally opens. Not by force, not like, okay, now we need to make love because this is now this only day in the week when we can do it or it's been way too long that I have been saying no. Now, okay, let's do it. This is forcing. This is again putting this pressure and repressing it more. And if you've done that in your life, if you forced yourself to make love, you have to apologize to yourself before your body. You have to do that. Because then the body goes into the repression. The more you pressure, the more it represses, the more it contracts. And the more you exist in this erotic openness, the more natural it, this, it extends out of you. So I really, really wish that for all women on this planet. Because when we do that, we change the fabric of this existence. We change it directly and we get out of the agendas that are not supporting the evolution of humanity. And we have to be serious about that because there are such agendas and you don't want to be feeding them in any way. And you coming home to yourself, coming home to life, to your aliveness, to your orgasmicness, to your erotic openness, to your aliveness that is now, not later, not, 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 not once you've done all your chores. It's not like that. It's now. So this is my great, great invitation. And this is the reason I've created the Deep Feminine. There, module after module, we're going deeper and deeper and deeper. And there will be work on unlocking the blocks that are actually existent in the energy, the energy that we've picked up from others, from our past partners, that is also sitting and, and breaking the integrity of who we are actually and how we vibrate and how we resonate. We'll have work on that, like of actively, directly releasing things. That we will also be working directly on activating that flow of waters through your whole entire life. We will be activating those cervical orgasms. We will be activating those Amrita kind of orgasms, those orgasms that are the nectar of female ejaculation. Yeah. And again, it's, it's actually, it's so sacred. We, we think, oh yeah, just this Amrita, this, this female ejaculation, like a kinky thing. No, it's manifestation of divinity through a woman's body because it's a paranormal power that every woman can experience. It's an altered state of consciousness that every woman can experience through the portal that is her body. So such an incredible work ahead. Uh, crystal wand is very recommended. There is a lot of things that I will be asking to do with your fingers because you really, when you work with your fingers on the inside of the yoni, you, you, you really get to know yourself. And this is also so important. Uh, because until you know your yoni and you feel her, people will tell you all sorts of things. You will have even ideas to go and get surgery at the level of your yoni only because you don't know her, because you don't understand her. Uterine prolapse, when the uterus is falling out of the body, this is happening because of the disconnection. And this has to stop because even young women are experiencing this right now. Even women who didn't give birth are experiencing that. And then their uteruses are being cut off or the cervixes are being cut off and they're being told all sorts of things by the authorities, by medical authorities or by any kind of person that they give authority because they don't know themselves. I remember I once went to a gynecologist many years ago because I don't need to do that. And I remember he looked at and he said, oh! and I was like, what do you mean? Oh! 
And previously, I would be very concerned when I heard that someone is looking inside my vagina and says, oh, alarm. <laughs> and he was like, oh, he was surprised that I even questioned that. He was like, oh, no, nothing actually, just a little bit of redness. I'm like, yeah, it's okay. Sometimes it happens that there's a little bit of redness. Yeah. And then I massage it and it goes away. <laughs> you like, what? You massage it? I'm like, yeah, I can teach you also. So this is how we get to know ourselves. Yeah, and yeah, you work with your fingers, so you really create that brain yoni connection. They really understand, oh, okay, this is all the things I have. There are some, once a woman asked me to come and touch her yoni because there was some strange growth in her yoni. She was a part of my retreat. And then I, I came and I, and I touched it and I was like, darling, what do you mean, this? She's like, yeah, 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 this, what is this? I'm like, this is your cervix, my love. <laughs> so this is how little we know ourselves and you get to know yourself so well and this is the seat of your feminine so when you know your yoni so well you know yourself as a woman so well and that's what empowers you and this is what unlocks your confidence your confidence is not how you dress and what kind of brands you have and, and what you do and how you behave and, and all those things. Your confidence is in knowing yourself, knowing yourself as a woman. And this is happens, this happens when you know your yoni. Nothing else, nothing else. You cannot fake it. A woman who knows her yoni, you will see kilometers away. She has a light, she has a radiance to her, which is unlike anything else. Cervix is not G-spot. Cervix is cervix. G-spot is G-spot. It's a whole universe. And G-spot is also very interesting space to explore. It's actually a G area, even not a G-spot. Okay, beloveds. So, um, uh, I started feeling this like it's an out-of-body experience. It can also be an out-of-body experience and also you can be out of body and in the body at the same time and that's the best that's what we want because the body is sacred the body is divine and we want to love this body and we want to open this body and we want to experience God in this body not in some remote place outside of the body okay beloved so it's been really beautiful to be with you thank you for your presence I really felt you here with me <clears throat> and um, we have a very deep dive ahead as I said we will have space for questions and answers there we will have a journey that will make you a full embodied confident powerful flowing woman and as a virgin you also get to do this this work in a very beautiful, powerful way. And actually it's really nice to know yourself before even you experience penetration of someone else. You get penetrated by the divine first. And that actually is an experience for every one of us. And we get to reframe that also. Whatever kind of first penetration experience you've had in your life, you will replace it with being penetrated by the divine. This is what is happening. One more day, Francesca, Francesca, <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. Thank you for being here. I hope to see many, many, many of you tomorrow live on the welcome call of the Deep Feminine. Once we begin, the price goes up. So this is also an extra incentive for you. Do not postpone it. Do not postpone it. This is your empowerment from deep within. This is you becoming who you were always meant to be. Do not postpone it. There's no time to waste. Your life is happening now.